In this video, we're going to explore the function and anatomy and motions of each of the rotator cuff muscles individually and as a group. And I will show you with a three-dimensional model the actual movements, so that might be valuable. I will also give you practical takeaways along the way as it relates to fitness and yoga. Let's get started. I'm Anthony Davis, and this is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. If you like that sort of thing, subscribe to this channel. Okay, let's learn the anatomy of the rotator cuff. So broad overview, there are four rotator cuff muscles, and they form an acronym that we can use to memorize all four of these muscles. So S for supraspinatus, I for infraspinatus, T for teres minor, and S for subscapularis. So the acronym is SITS, S-I-T-S, SITS. Okay, so one more time, supraspinatus S, infraspinatus I, teres minor I. Um, and if you're trying to remember if, it, if it's the major or the minor that's part of the rotator cuff, because there is a teres major as well, and it is not part of the rotator cuff. If you're trying to remember which one of those two is part of the rotator cuff, I just remember that infraspinatus is part of the rotator cuff, and infraspinatus starts with an I, and teres minor has an I in it. Teres major does not have an I. So that honestly, that's how I remember it. Um, and uh, subscapularis. Okay, so now how to remember each of these individually? Well, supraspinatus, as you can see, that muscle lives above what is called the spine of the scapula. So that is that horizontal, actually for you, from your angle, it's going kind of this way. Um, it is that horizontal-ish, slightly diagonal piece of bone that sticks out of the scapula. Uh, that's your shoulder blade. And above it is the supraspinatus. Supra, this is why you need to know the rude um, beginnings. So prefixes to words are super important here. Supra, that word root just means above. Spinatus, spine, atus, spine. So it's above the spine. Cool. Um, infraspinatus, inferior, inferior is below. So infra, spine, atus. So below the spine of the scapula. Atus. <laughs> so it's just below the spine. Easy peasy. Teres uh, minor. You know, I forget the, 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 I think, Greek roots on this one, but, you know, all I can say is it's just this little buddy. It's just infraspinatus's little buddy, and it hides right underneath it, and it does the exact same thing. It has the exact same function as infraspinatus. It's just a little minor muscle. And so it does just a little bit less. Um, uh, it's like a little less strong. And then subscapularis, the word sub means underneath. And it's underneath what? The scapularis. So underneath the scapula muscle. Uh, well, where is it? It's underneath the scapula so if you look at a person from you know behind you know if you were to dig underneath their scapula which a good massage therapist chiropractor or physical therapist might do to your subscapularis muscle in order to you know uh, well you know massage it let's just say or do some deep tissue or myofascial type of uh, therapy on it then you, uh, you dig under there and that's your underneath the scapula muscle the subscapularis okay now, as a group, this is very important before we explore the function, and I will show you the function of each of them individually, because that's the kind of thing you have to memorize in an anatomy class, but that is wrong. And it, it, this is important because it also means that all of the, you know, exercises that we do for rotator cuff muscles to strengthen them and rehab them and all that stuff where we're doing banded, you know, external, internal rotation, that kind of stuff. And we're supposedly targeting one of these muscles at a time. Yeah, kind of, I guess, but that's not what they do. They're tiny muscles. Their job is not to rotate the arm, big, big muscles those muscles like the deltoids pecs lat you know those kinds of stuff uh, of um muscles are primarily the rotators of the arm these tiny little muscles their main job uh, definitely their main job is they work together as a group 
they grab the humerus, which is your arm bone, and they grab it from all sides, 360 degrees, as you can see here, look at the origins of these muscles, right? So here's one and like, look at the origin of this muscle, right? They grab onto the head of the humerus from every angle and they hold it, they go, and they hold it in the socket, right? So they hold the ball in the socket, in the center of the socket so that it doesn't go up or down or forward or back or any of that kind of stuff. That's their job primarily is stability or what we call centration, keeping the ball in the center of the socket, centration, okay? Now, let us explore each of these individually. So supraspinatus, here we are. The action alone, which is this kind of stuff that you would have to learn for an anatomy um, quiz, is abduction of the arm, abduction of the arm. So we're looking at this skeleton from the back and a little to the right. So this is the person's right shoulder and we're looking at them from the back. And you can see that it pulls on the um, greater tubercle of the humerus. And when it's, by the way, when these muscles are turning yellow, that is when they are contracting. And when they stop being yellow, that's when they're relaxing. Okay, so when it contracts, it abducts the uh, humerus. Now let's look at it from the front as well, because I want you to see in here, this is uh, kind of a cool view because I know a lot of people talk a lot about impingement. So look at the space that exists underneath that acromion process. And this is what's going on underneath that space. There's this tendon, which you see here from the supraspinatus. Uh, and this is the tendon that tends to be, uh, quote, impinged. Uh, at least that's the claim. And then uh, there's also a, like a bursa in there, which is a little fluid filled sac that, that tends to get um, inflamed as well. Okay, next muscle. So the function of supraspinatus is abduction. Now next is infraspinatus. Remember, we're just going down the acronym SITS. Okay, so I for infraspinatus lives below the spine of the scap and its primary motion motion on its own is lateral rotation of the humerus. So I'm going to look out. We're again looking at this person from the back and uh, you can see when it contracts, it externally rotates. So it's rotating the um, humerus externally. Now let's zoom in and let's just look at it again, contracting, contracting a little bit more. Cool. So it's just pulling on that um, greater tubercle. So boop, bow. Okay. Next infra or teres minor teres minor with an i because uh again sits we have an i and i just again associate the teres minor as sort of another i <laughs> in the in the sits muscles um and you can see that it does the same thing here it does exactly the same thing that infraspinatus did cool it's just smaller, so it can't work as hard. It, can't, it cannot work as well. Cool, it's just not as strong, that's all. Next, subscapularis. Right here. And it lives on the front side, the anterior uh, face of the uh, scapula. And its primary motion on its own would be, so again, we're looking, now we're looking at the right shoulder from the front. We're looking at this person from the front and we're looking at their right shoulder. Cool. And it contracts and it internally rotates. Now let's zoom out just so you can see the arm when it, and contract internally rotate, go back to neutral. Contract internally rotate, go back to neutral. Contract internally rotate, go back to neutral. Cool. So that is all of the rotator cuff muscles. Um, as it relates to training and fitness, et cetera, et cetera, frankly, you um, training external rotation and internal rotation explicitly to uh, strengthen these muscles, I think is a silly idea. I don't think that training internal and external rotation alone are a silly idea. I just think that the um, theory of, oh, because we need to strengthen these muscles, no, that's not exactly what these muscles do. These muscles centrate the joint. That's their main purpose. So if you want to train centration of the joint, just do literally any arm motion at all and you will be using these muscles. 
The other way that you could sort of train all of them at once is by distracting the joint. So things like hanging. So if you grab onto a pull-up bar and you just hang from the pull-up bar, whether you're doing a passive hang, which is you're relaxing and allow the shoulder blades to go up by the ears, that's fine. Um, or you're doing sort of an active hang, which is you you know draw the shoulder blades kind of down. Um, either one is going to engage the rotator cuff muscles, okay? And some people even do like scapular pull-ups and any of those options are great carrying things if you carry kettlebells so if you do a, like a, a farmer's carry uh that would be both hands or a suitcase carry which is like a kettlebell in one hand those are all great options now with yoga we do not have any real opportunity for a distraction of the joint we just don't um, yeah, I, I know that you could come up with some clever solutions using like straps and things like that, but the, 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 the bottom line is that's okay because even in yoga, just doing any arm motions, chaturangas, you know, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, um, side plank, plank, any of those things are going to strengthen the rotator cuff because you're strengthening the entire shoulder complex. So yes. For a highly specialized, um, you know, therapist, a physical therapist, or a, a doctor of chiropractic, or something like that, then uh, you those people need to maybe know more about how to specifically target these things. Generally speaking, it's not that important. And if your approach is to just generally strengthen the arm, you are going to be doing a great job. Keep it up. Don't worry too much about it. Have fun move every day, and I hope this taught you something. Thanks, I'll see you next time.